Hello and welcome, dear viewers. We are back live. All right. Um, for this lesson, we are continuing with our series two of um, our IELTS preparation. And we are now on the second last episode, episode 25. So hopefully today we will complete that episode. And um, as always, let's wait for the students to join. And then we can begin. Hello, Andre. Hello, Alan. Our prayers have been answered. We are back and we are live. Yes, it's the uh, most uh, good news. <laughs> That's good, yeah, because um, I think some of the students, uh, including yourself, are probably wondering why we cannot watch our recorded lessons. So now we are back and we are live. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how are you? How was your day? Mm, I sit at home mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes uh, I'm doing something. For example, uh, I did uh, activities on, from previous uh, lesson. Uh, sometimes I uh, write music and uh, uh, in addition yesterday uh, e evening I had a talk with uh, um, a, a, your American team member just a second <laughs> I, f I forgot his name uh, American Dario de, de Silva maybe you know who is it Dario da Silva. It's from uh, English Leo team, like 
maybe boss. I don't know. Oh, so but he's oh right, right. He's American. I haven't met him. No, I haven't. Yeah. Met him. Mm. So he's. Uh, he asked me about my impression uh, of lessons uh, on teachers, mm -hmm. and I told him that I prefer to uh, take apart the Thalens lessons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Good of uh, accreditation for myself. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate and, uh, that. Uh, he told me that uh, they plan uh, to add uh, new teachers, new faces, mm -hmm. new uh, schedule uh, of lessons. Cool. And yes, I hope uh, it will be great. Uh, to meet with other people with different accents and uh, uh, different approaches also. Mm -hmm. I, I think uh, it's a really good idea because I uh, searched some um, online resources like that but uh, I didn't find anything uh, appropriate by price mm -hmm. and by quality because uh, of course uh, it's uh, easy to find a teacher uh, for uh, real money <laughs> but if you uh, have enough money it's a real problem yeah this is really it's affordable for everyone I think and not only that you have a variety of you know lessons you can take not only from myself but also from other teachers mm -hmm. so you have the option you have that freedom I think for a student that that's that's um, that's a big bonus yeah yes it's flexible for teachers and for students yeah yeah it's a good excellent yeah so if you could yeah as, as you just said uh, lingual is expanding so more teachers We'll be mm -hmm. joining, looks like it, and uh, we're, we're going to be getting more classes. Uh, I wasn't told anything of that, but I think that was a plan, anyways. Mm -hmm. Just slowly working at it, you see. Yeah, it's definitely going to benefit the students and our teachers as well, and everyone, I believe. So it's cool. It's cool. All right. So you 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 spoke to. Um, uh, to him? Dario, uh, the silver Yes, in English, of course. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, of course. It was uh, a little training for me. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Of course, uh, I had some um, troubles with fluency, uh, and uh, uh, I searched appropriate phrases and words, mm -hmm. but uh, <laughs> as I saw, uh, it's a real, uh, real progress for, for me to speak with different people without mm -hmm. uh, uh, serious doubt and uh, enough, uh, maybe flexible, I don't know how to say it. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean that uh, I uh, uh, could easily uh, understand him and uh, answer uh, <laughs> with uh, com comprehension, with uh, mm -hmm. uh, clear ideas, and so on. Very good. Yeah, I can definitely see that you you have been improving over the weeks. You know and. Uh, you you have uh, a good a solid you know vocabulary I have to say yes it helps but uh, uh, real uh, I need really uh, to practice uh, maybe a typical phrases typical uh. Um, uh, sentences with uh, uh, stable construction but yeah. uh, uh, it's just repeating should be used. Yeah, it's just a, it, a matter of implementing those phrases and idioms. This is why I do, you know, some of these idiom uh, lessons uh, because mm -hmm. you know, some of them maybe are not very useful, but most of them are. And if you understand them, 
you can use them immediately. And when I give you the chance to speak as a student, yes, I agree. Yeah, that's your chance. It makes uh, uh, our speaking more colorful, more yeah. uh, natural. Yeah, more, I agree. more expressive. Yeah, yes. expressive. Yes, color. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, did you have th your therapy today? No, uh, it will start from Monday. Okay, I see. Yeah, I just uh, <laughs> uh, recovering. I'm just recovering now. I see. The yeah. wound is still heal healing, yeah. The wound on your tongue. Yes, yes, a little bit, but uh, step by step, uh, it uh, getting. Uh, mm, Good. <laughs> getting better, and better. Better. Getting better. Yeah. Getting better. Awesome. It's easy to eat <laughs> for me because uh, before that I can uh, I could only drink in liquid way. I can all, imagine. All mm. thing. <laughs> you must have missed all, all the lovely food that your <laughs> family was cooking. But it was funny because it's a new. Um, uh, maybe a, a new approach, new feelings, uh, <laughs> when you can uh, um, taste uh, usual products in other way, you mm. can uh, find something new <laughs> yeah. and unusual. <laughs> yeah. So and, uh, it's easy for our stomach in addition. Uh, after uh, this uh, food, I feel uh, really better. Mm -hmm. than before, because my stomach very uh, reacts uh, on that very mm -hmm. positive. True, yeah. so it's almost like as if you were fasting, mm. right, because you probably didn't eat the food that you would normally eat, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's almost like you were fasting, really. Did you lose any weight? How long was it? Was it two weeks that you weren't able to eat? Um. Yes, two weeks, and I lost uh, maybe uh, two kilograms. Yeah. Two kilos, yeah, that's all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I remember usually, you know, when I get sick or when I get a flu or something, with everyone, I guess, mm -hmm. um, you miss that taste because no matter what you eat, mm -hmm. it doesn't mm -hmm. taste. So I always. Yes. Re receptors uh, are very uh, became very indefinite. Maybe it's uh, very hard to understand what do you eat at all. Yes, our palate, our palate, or the mm -hmm. there's yeah receptors. They <laughs> they don't do their job. <laughs> they mm -hmm. can't do their job, so we can't taste anything. Yeah, uh, so as soon as the flu is over, I'm always so happy I can, you know, taste food again. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay, look, um, I think we'll get started. I don't think anyone else will be joining. It's just the two of us. Okay, uh, let's go. There is one viewer also watching us in the lobby. So welcome to the viewer. Maybe that's um, I know that Sergey used to watch. I don't. Maybe it's Sergey. Maybe he's not mm -hmm. able to. But he would join if he's free. All right, so we're doing episode 25, and this is the actual, uh, I think, yeah, it's the second last episode. Uh, we still have 26 to do, uh, a bit more writing. So I will play the video as always, and you will have all the freedom in the world to explain and summarize it yourself after that. Okay, you're, you ready? Yes. Alright, let's go. Um, yeah. Hello, I'm Margot Politis. Welcome to Study English, IELTS Preparation. Today on Study English, we're going to give you some tips and strategies for answering Task 1 IELTS academic questions. We'll look at what's involved in planning an essay, and then we'll try planning answers to some practice questions. 
task one of the IELTS academic module asks you to describe data. The keyword is describe. That means you don't need to comment on or interpret the data. Your task is only to describe the data. When you're writing a description, it's important to know what the context is and who your audience is. In task one, the audience is usually a university lecturer or a teacher, so we know that it should be formal. Let's review what we know about task one. The keyword is describe and the context is formal. There's a range of things you might be asked to describe. Let's have a look at some examples. You might be asked to describe data. That could be in a bar graph or column graph, a pie chart or a line graph or it could be presented in the form of a table. You might have to describe some kind of process or cycle. You could also be shown a diagram of a machine or object and asked to describe the parts or the function. Now let's take a look at a practice question. Here's an example task one question. This table gives participation rates in higher education in New South Wales for males and females according to home location in urban, rural or remote areas for the year 2004. We also have a graph. The graph shows the same information as the table. We can see that we have information about the number of men and women who go on to higher education or university in three different areas. Before we can describe this data, it's a good idea to think about how to organise our description. There are two options. It's up to you which one you choose, but let's look at each of them. With option one, you could divide your essay up into an introductory paragraph and two body paragraphs. One paragraph would describe male participation rates in each of the three locations while the other paragraph would describe female participation rates. So our essay would be structured like this. The first paragraph is the introductory paragraph. It should only have two sentences. Sentence one should paraphrase the question and sentence two should outline your approach to the data. The second two paragraphs are body paragraphs one and two. In the first, you might address female participation rates for each location, urban, rural and remote. In body paragraph two, you'd talk about male participation rates for each location, urban, rural and remote. Or you could try option two and divide the essay up into three body paragraphs, one for each of the locations. The essay would be structured like this, with an introductory paragraph, as always, then three body paragraphs. Body paragraph one would discuss urban participation rates for males and females. Body paragraph two would discuss rural participation rates for males and females. And body paragraph three would be used to discuss remote participation rates for males and females. There's no clear answer as to which way is better. They are both correct. But remember that your essay needs to be at least 150 words. Now let's take a closer look at how to structure your essay. The first paragraph is always the introductory paragraph. There should be two sentences in your introductory paragraph. Sentence one aims to paraphrase the question by telling the reader what the topic is. It is important not to just copy the question. 
You can use the language of the question and build your own sentence. In sentence two, outline how you will organise the data and therefore how you'll organise the essay. Let's try to write our introductory paragraph. It might look like this. The table presents data supplied by the Department of Education, Employment and Training on the participation rates in higher education for males and females in 2004. The data is for three locations, urban, rural and remote. So our first sentence tells us about the question. It includes information about where and when the data has come from. Our second sentence tells the reader that we have divided the data into three sections. There will be three body paragraphs, one each about the urban, rural and remote data. This is an introductory paragraph for option two. The order of the paragraphs will follow the order given in our introduction. Urban, then rural and then remote. So let's review and take an overall look at the essay we're creating. Let's say we've decided to go with option one. Remember that was an essay with two body paragraphs, one describing female participation rates for the three locations and one describing male participation rates. So let's start with our introductory paragraph. We might write, the table presents data supplied by the Department of Education, Employment and Training on the participation rates in higher education in 2004 from three locations, urban, rural and remote. The data is divided into two sets, female and male participation. Notice our second sentence tells the reader that the data will be presented according to female and male participation rates. So our first body paragraph will be about data for female participants. Here's the structure of body paragraph one. It shows female participation rates in each of the three locations. Body paragraph two will describe male participation rates for each of the three areas. Now let's finish with another example. Here's our data. It's a table. You can see that it shows data for the number of international students studying intensive English courses in Australia. We have the number of students in 2002, 2003 and 2004 for five countries, China, Korea, Taiwan, Hong Kong and the Netherlands. So how could you structure this essay? One option is to have body paragraphs for each of the three years. Within those paragraphs you'd have to describe data for the five countries. You might be able to think of some other structuring options as well. If you want to practice with some more examples, just go to our Study English website. It's at abcasiapacific.com slash studyenglish. And that's all for today. I'll see you next time for more. Bye-bye. All right. Andre, that was it. Please give us your summary. Yes, it was really um, useful information uh, for me, uh, but I have also an experience to, uh, in writing this task uh, in testing mode with my teacher. Uh, I try to do that maybe five or six uh, times. Oh, good. With different uh, data. Um, yeah, and uh, as I uh, can summarize uh, from my own experience and uh, this uh, um, advices, uh, this piece, 
pieces of advice. Ah, yeah, this piece yeah. of advice or these pieces this piece of advice. Of, uh, advice. Yes. Um, uh, first of all, that you need to keep in mind that uh, you need just describe data without your uh, own uh, opinions or uh, uh, thoughts about uh, um, about. Um, different uh, information. I mean that you do not need to, uh, to write about uh, how it can be interpreted in uh, the, uh, that or those situation. Um, uh, at, uh, and of course you need to, to um, uh, you need to control the time for writing because uh, uh, all, all tasks, uh, all, all two tasks, um, you need to uh, divide uh, in one hour. Uh, you, you need to write in one hour and uh, you need uh, to divide uh, this time for two parts. Uh, for example, 20 minutes for task one and 40 for task two, and also uh, it depends. Uh, for example, uh, uh, how it's difficult. Uh, I mean, uh, topic for uh, the second is uh, uh, maybe uh, you need to start first, and uh, uh, if if uh, you will have time. Uh, to to write for uh, the rest time uh, the first topic. For, mm -hmm. for example, it's it also possible. Uh, it depends on only on uh, how difficult uh, uh, questions are. Uh, okay. Mm. Uh, regarding the da data description, uh, first of all, you need to. I define uh, uh, what type of uh, information uh, you have. For example, bar graphs uh, or pie chart or uh, other graphs or table. Uh -huh. uh, and it uh, 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 it is a key uh, for your strategy how to describe it. Um, uh, if you have uh, so much data, for example, uh, a complicated table uh, with uh, many rows and uh, um, columns, uh, you need to find uh, uh, the best uh, way uh, how to describe it. And, uh, uh, for example, uh, you can group some data uh, uh, if uh, they uh, have uh, the similar um, properties, for example, like it uh, was discussed uh, in option one. For example, divide uh, whole material on two basic or, or, or two main parts, for example, uh, male and female, yeah, or yeah. Uh, if uh, Mm, it's uh, if we talk about, uh, for example, uh, people who uh, do sports or uh, who not, uh, but uh, in different countries or in different social uh, strata, you need mm -hmm. to uh, group uh, in more uh, massive uh, bunch <laughs> of information. Hello. On a more massive or larger scale, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It uh, um, it will uh, give you a chance to uh, save time for description and to do it more uh, efficient, maybe. Efficiently. Mm -hmm. um, yes, efficient, efficiently. Uh, the next step, uh, you need to uh, um, understand uh, how many paragraphs uh, 
uh, do you need for uh, for this uh, for uh, this uh, writing? Uh, of course, uh, it it may be um, two or three paragraphs, but uh, uh, introductory uh, paragraph is obviously needed in any case. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, this paragraph describes. Uh, for uh, this paragraph contains um, paraphrased. Uh, uh, description of the table given from the task and the uh, key uh, key way uh, how the data uh, will be described mm -hmm. um, uh, the follow paragraphs uh, as I told before uh, we can uh, devote to uh, describe uh, main parts of uh, uh, data which we have. Also, we need to keep in mind that in uh, in all cases, uh, for example, if uh, this data uh, relates to the past, uh, we need to use uh, uh, past tenses or uh, present simple. Um, as I remember correctly, uh, of course uh, it's uh, recommended, as I know, uh, not only uh, give uh, uh, introductory paragraph and uh, two or three main uh, paragraphs, but also at least one sentence uh, should be like a, a summarizing and conclusion. Uh, she uh, didn't tell about that, but I uh, think it's important yeah. because we need at least, uh, uh, <laughs> for example, I, I even saw uh, uh, one uh, funny recommendation. Uh, if you uh, don't know what to write in summarize, just to write at least it's the finish of description. <laughs> <laughs> At least one sentence, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Just to say this is it. It's done. The conclusion. <laughs> yeah. Uh, of course, uh, we. Uh, it depends on the type of the data. We can sure. divide on more uh, parts, uh, um, like in uh, this uh, example, on three paragraphs. But uh, she told that uh, it's uh, uh, no um, differences, but I uh, think it's really a different approach because we need more time to describe all three paragraphs. Uh, even, even formally, uh, we need uh, um, more words. Uh, which not uh, may be not included in your uh, score uh, if you write more than uh, 150 uh, words. Uh, it's uh, uh, it will uh, a waste of time. It will be a waste of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, I think that's all. Yeah, very good. I see you know a lot about this. You have definitely, um, you know, practiced this. It's good. It's good to know. Uh, and everything you mentioned is spot on. It's very correct what you say. You know, uh, you know, time is a very important factor when you're doing these. You need to know and kind of um, pace yourself. Mm -hmm. And um, it's very important when you're writing. You know, when you're describing things or when you're writing the essay, and you know some of these graphs are included, you have to understand them. Oh, and one more thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, you should, you must, to correct your uh, 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 text uh, text before you uh, finish, uh, or uh, ju just after you finish uh, writing, you at least need a couple minutes for. Mm -hmm. Proofreading. Yes, yes, yes. Proofreading because uh, 
uh, it's really important and uh, every mistake make influence on your the final result absolutely yeah it's it's very important that you take a couple of minutes yeah before you uh, say I'm done or before you hand in your paper mm -hmm. to proofread it every single I mean not only here in any exam that you do mm -hmm. to proofread because you might have missed something or mm -hmm. you know valuable marks that you might miss out on yeah good point all right so now here on the uh, on this PDF in the study notes, we have over 20 pages. So obviously, we're not going to oh. go through all of them. <laughs> <laughs> so I will give you the link for this, and you can download it and you know look at it in detail. What it is is just a lot of pages of graphs and giving you examples. Um, you know, and you know because you're already aware of this and you've practiced it m numerous times. I'll just mention some of these things. Like this is a tip that we can always keep in mind mm -hmm. uh, it's absolutely necessary that in task one the academic writing to quickly identify the main or significant features of a given graphic text so a table graph object process or procedure summarize these and make comparisons where relevant mm -hmm. yeah you know that yeah. so then look for significant features such as trends which stand out in a graph, key mm -hmm. stages in a process or procedure, um, and important characteristics of an object. So these details you got to be aware of. Mm -hmm. It's pretty self-explanatory, but it's just a good reminder. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then develop your skills in organizing a summary of information supplied. Um, including relevant information using a variety of sentence uh, types and appropriate vocabulary. Always check your spelling. Yeah, this is all. All of this you'll be marked on. Yeah, mm -hmm. your spelling using the appropriate vocabulary. If you do use repetition a lot, mm, not good. Yeah, if you use a lot of uh, let's say long sentences where you could have easily shortened them. That's also not good. So you have to know how to uh, also write an essay. So you got to really prepare yourself when it comes to these things. All right. So then here they're basically mentioning, you know, what do these graphic texts actually look like? Uh, so there are different types. We have the table, then line graph, bar graph. Uh, column, pie chart, and so on. Object, if this is an object, you have to describe a process or procedure. So here are some examples. Graph, table, very simple. We've done this back in primary, I believe, or most yeah. before. So very, very easy. Then we have a column graph, mm -hmm. like Mago Politis uh, showed us. Mm -hmm. Pie graph. Pie graph. Mm -hmm. Line graph. Mm. You always have the y and x axis and so on. And then we have the process. Um, actually, we have some examples of the process in episode 7 from the first series and episode 18 also. A couple of examples given to us. So you can check that out in the video. And then there is a cycle. And here also another example can be found. In mm -hmm. episode 12 of series one. Mm -hmm. And then a procedure. procedure. It's mm -hmm. different from a process. Okay, so for example, they're asking us um, how to make a copy of a document using a photocopier. Yeah. It's close, but mm -hmm. a little bit different. It is slight differences, yeah. So then you have a picture or an illustration of a photocopier. Uh, which is used to make copies of documents. So summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. So you got to understand each compartment and so on and so forth and the, then, mm -hmm. you know, the procedures. So this is a sample answer if you want to briefly look at it. So the introduction is at, at the very beginning, obviously. Yes. Um, with a couple of sentences, so orientation, yeah, the orientation, um, and then the outline 
of uh, for that essay, which is the last mm -hmm. sentence or towards the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, straightforward. And then some keywords: feeder, the document feeder, the, the mm -hmm. um, part that feeds the document. Um, transition signals. To start with, that's very good to use those okay. transition signals. And then you can say, secondly, you know, or next, like here they've used it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what else do they have? Yeah. Um, so a lot of key vocabulary. Next, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And okay. verbs in imperative. Okay. Ah. Okay. Series of orders. So when you are describing something, um, its function or process, it should be in its imperative. Yeah? Mm, once again, uh, when we describe a uh, proce process, uh, it's, so it's like, like si simple in present. We should keep it in simple present. And like instruction for... Uh, yes, yes, instructions uh, of, for example, how to operate something, how yeah. to open, how to open something. What you should do, yeah? Yeah. Make, enter, place, okay, remember. Then, uh, so select, remember, mm -hmm. yeah, adjust, mm -hmm. try, and so on. All mm -hmm. right, so that's one <clears throat> example for us there. And then we have the object. That's different. Again, for example, how something works. How do I organize a response for a question incorporating a graphic text or a combination of graphic texts? Mm -hmm. So here you have more information. This is the question that's, that you know might expect. You might expect in the task. Mm -hmm. So then you have the data and, and the graph. And the graph, yeah. Mm -hmm. So straightforward, yeah. It's. I think you're pretty pretty advanced, very well advanced when it comes to these things. Um, what else then? It just talks about you know it breaks it down for you. You know the mm -hmm. stru structure of the essay and so on. The introduction, then you know the the body. You have different paragraphs. Like she said, Margot Politis, you can mm -hmm. split it into years. Or the years. Mm -hmm. uh, and then mention all the countries in each paragraph. Mm -hmm. Comparison. Um, and then you have another option. This per is another countries. way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you can use them per country and include all the years in each paragraph. Mm -hmm. So it's the same, just the other way around. Or you can split them and make them even shorter by using only mm -hmm. three paragraphs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Asian countries and European. And European. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, various ways of doing it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I would uh, would uh, choose uh, this approach. Mm. The last one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it saves you time, saves you writing a lot in you know, having too many paragraphs and so on and so forth. Yes, and uh, it, uh, it's uh, also... Uh, More organized, perhaps. Uh, ...show to the examiner uh, your maybe analytical features and yes. Uh, yes. Uh, possibility uh, to summarize more higher <laughs> yeah at a higher higher standard very good yes absolutely yeah that's good good point mentioned anyways um, we only got about 12 minutes left I think uh, we have to do the activity so there is the link mm -hmm. for this PDF um, and now I'm gonna open the activities because there are I think three or four activities I hope we can do at least half of them Mm, let's do. Let's see. Oh, it's good to get these out of the way. Mm. So, what do we have to do here? Hmm. Mm. Choose a correct preposition to complete the following sentences. Okay. Let's see. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, over the next couple of years, the price of plasma televisions is expected to draw uh, by twenty percent. Yeah, you think it's A? A. Very good. Yeah, it's expected to drop by 20%. Mm -hmm. Very good. Excellent. Well done. That was easy, uh, I think. The price of such television uh, should peak 
uh, I think it should be at at a little over uh, yeah. one thousand, yeah. uh, twenty, two hundred. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. At so at, at a little mm -hmm. peak at a little over twelve hundred dollars or one thousand two hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right. Question three. Uh, this price should be reached. Hmm. Uh, by two thousand nine. But I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, you're right. Actually, it is by. Like, can can we say on? Uh, uh, as I understand uh, this. Uh, um, Idea of this uh, preposition uh, when we t uh, when we uh, tell by uh, we mean that uh, it will be um, achieved by the uh, period of time uh, to to this data by this uh, um, exact point. Mm -hmm. But uh, if we uh, told on 2009, it may be. Uh, um, Recognized like only in this year, uh, mm -hmm. the price should be <laughs> re uh, uh, changed. Maybe, maybe like, like that. Mm. Okay, out of these three, this is the only viable option, grammatically even. If you wanted to use another one, you mm -hmm. wouldn't be able to use in. Mm -hmm. In yeah. Then only in that year. So maybe let's say we are now in 2007, and if yeah. I say by, so it can be finished in 2007. Any time mm. from now until the yes. end of 2009. Yeah. That's what it means. If yes. I say in, then we have to wait two years until 2009 mm -hmm. begins. You understand? Mm. But on we can't unless you give a date. Yes. It's on Monday, Tuesday. Yeah, on a, on a day or, or like the 12th of January mm -hmm. 2009. Yeah, on, then you can say on. At doesn't go at all. Mm -hmm. oh, this is the only other option. Yeah. Okay. Right, so, uh, four. Uh, this drop makes plasma television affordable for the. Um, hmm. This drop. Uh, I suppose it's B of 20%. This drop of 20% will make plasma affordable. Yeah, that's it. This drop of 20% will make plasma televisions affordable for the average person. So mm -hmm. you have to also understand the sentence. And yeah, this off, you're describing a, a certain drop. Mm -hmm. In percentage, mm -hmm. so a drop of twenty percent, like a part of the whole, yeah, uh, uh, amount, yeah, yeah, twenty percent of the hundred, yeah, mm -hmm. very good. Five. Uh, the prices of televisions uh, have been falling um, from from nineteen fifty six. And they first came on the market. From? Yeah. yeah, that's the one. From. So the prices of TVs have been falling from 1956 when they first came on the market. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right. Number six. Let's move it on. Hmm. In 2001. Uh, the first plasma television became available. C. That's it. So here we have in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in two thousand one. So in that year, this is when the first plasma TV was available. Mm -hmm. Good. Seven three B 
from Japan. Most are imported from Japan. Excellent. Most are imported from Japan. Yeah, very good. The journey from Japan to the local market adds to the cost. Yeah. Two. So here we have from to. Mm -hmm. yeah, from to the local market. Uh, the the biggest sales are at Christmas. B. The biggest sales are at Christmas. Very good. It's a specific time of the year. We mm -hmm. use special occasion at, at Christmas. Mm -hmm. uh, shops open at 8 oh, on 27 December. Very good. Yeah. Remember what I said before? When mm -hmm. you have a date, we say on. But when it's a time, then we say at. at. Mm -hmm. Very good. Excellent. All right, you're good with your prepositions. I can see that. So let's have a look at this next activity and choose the correct word from the box. The first graph uh, clearly uh, shows that numbers of international students are increasing. Yes, excellent. So the first graph clearly shows. Mm -hmm. it's, it's visible, yeah? It's displayed. Mm. Very good. What about the second one? Um, uh, the rows... Uh, no. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the. Maybe the doubling of increase in the number of uh, international students has been dramatic. No, doubling it and it, no. <laughs> Do you understand uh, all the words in the box? Yes, yes, but uh, I uh, try to uh, find uh, the most suitable. Uh, article there uh, show us that it should be uh, noun. Yeah. Uh, oh, the rate of increase in the number. Yes, very good. The rate of increase in the mm -hmm. number of international students has been dramatic. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right, three. Uh, mm, okay, the numbers. Uh, mm, 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 have doubled yeah. over the years. Yes. Why can't we say doubling? Uh, because it's a, a simple uh, past uh, present perfect. <laughs> have uh, have doubled mm -hmm. the idea. Okay, good, excellent. So if it was doubling, we would have to say have been. Oh, yes. Yeah? Have been doubling. Excellent. All right, four. The rise has been dramatic, doubling every few years. This uh, situation we can use yes. doubling. Excellent, very good. In this case, we can use doubling. The local student population was. Mm. Um, was expected, maybe. Mm, expected. Expected what? Expected 16,000? Yes. Expected to be. Maybe. Ah, yeah. okay. Okay. To. Okay. It has to be a verb after expected. Mm -hmm. It should be uh, passive. Okay, that is why I used to expect it. Mm -hmm. uh, ah, okay, approximately. Yeah, yeah. Approximately. The local student population was approximately sixteen thousand in nineteen ninety nine. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Very good. And, uh, 
It rose to 20,000 uh, 20, two years later. Very good. It rose. So past tense of rise. Mm -hmm. Very good. Seven. And this is an... Uh, an increase of 25% for period. Very good. An increase. Oh, where is it? There it is. It's a noun. Okay, the rate, however, dropped uh, uh, significantly in the next decade. Yeah, it dropped. How did it drop? We need an adverb. Significantly. Very good. All right, nine. The graph shows an um, uh, <laughs> I, I need to check uh, this. I need uh, um, increasing, increasing maybe. Let's minimize it for you a bit. Yes, okay. it's increasing. Yeah, the graphs show an increasing demand, an increasing demand for Australian university education. Very good. Mm -hmm. All right, and the last one? And the growth is uh, obviously... Uh, hmm. Yeah, the growth is... Expected. Yeah, that's the last one. Yeah, very good. Expected to continue beyond 2000. Mm -hmm. All right, excellent. Well done. That was good. We have another two activities, activity three and four. So we've run out of time, and that's going to be your homework for okay. tonight, if you have the time. Mm -hmm. It'll be good to challenge yourself and to see, especially the fourth activity, because mm -hmm. um, yeah, it requires a bit more uh, thinking. So I'll give you the link for this. Mm -hmm. There it is. Hey, any any questions, Andre? No, um, it's a very uh, useful <laughs> review for yeah, me. Definitely, but what I know in principle, but it's like repetition. Yeah, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, you're most welcome. Um, thank you for joining, and I'll catch you next time. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.